Good morning. Our entrance antiphon, let my mouth be filled with your praise that I may sing aloud. My lips shall shout for joy when I sing to you, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, restorer and lover of innocence, direct the hearts of your servants towards yourself, that those you have set free from the darkness of unbelief may never stray from the light of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go to Jerusalem to the apostles and the presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles, and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church, as well as by the apostles and the presbyters, and they reported what God had done with them. But some from the party of the Pharisees, who had become believers, stood up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law, the apostles and presbyters met together to see about this matter. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go to the house of the Lord. And now we have set a foot within the gates of old Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. According to the degree for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. 
Anyone who does anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus is not just, <clears throat> pardon me, Jesus is not just using poetic imagery here to express a reality, but it's just quite factual. That for the branch to bear fruit, it really must remain attached to the vine. And we know the truth of this. And yet we find far too many branches that have withered. Now, the great thing about the spiritual life is while the spirit to grow must be attached to the vine, that is, to be nourished by the word and sacrament, well, in this life, we know that even that branch that withers somewhat can, through the great grace of Jesus, be brought back to life. It can be grafted once again to the vine. It's not a matter of horticultural, but it is a matter of spiritual life. That that branch who may have found its way away from the vine can find its way back. And that's a task that we bear as, well, those branches are yet attached to the vine. We have the opportunity to bring others to find Jesus once again. They may have known him, but they may have lost their way. But this is an opportunity for us in this effort of evangelization to, well, bring those who have, well, in some respects, forgotten just how powerful the word is and even more powerful is this Eucharist in which Christ gives us that nurturance of his own body and blood. Just how important that is to the spirit. Because the spirit in the spiritual life is a living thing. It needs to be cared for, pruned in this imagery so that it can continue to grow and bear fruit. But again, the great thing because of grace of God's forgiveness, well, that withered branch can be reanimated. And that is a task that we can achieve in many respects through our prayer, through our prayer but also through our own perseverance in giving witness to the practice of the faith. Whatever we ask in Jesus' name will be done. Let us entrust our prayers to the Father through the Son. For the church, may God bless her shepherds with all the wisdom of their apostate forebears. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all our leaders, may God inspire them not to speak or act out on their own, but to do his will. Let us pray to the Lord. For those sick in mind and body, may God console and provide for them. Let us pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the light of Christ, especially William Burney and Vera Serwick, may Jesus bring them safely into the Father's house. Let us pray to the Lord. 
and for the intentions of this Mass, Franny and Sean McCarville, Richard Newman, Jesse and Dolores Leeper, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And for the prayers we hold silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. We join in our vocation prayer. God, our Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations. Help our people offer their lives in service to you. Let them hear your spirit's invitation and awaken in their hearts a desire to respond with courage, generosity, and joy. Raise up from our families faithful leaders who will serve as deacons, priests, and consecrated religious as we entrust to your care all who seek to do your will we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread that we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the communion and upon the Lord has risen and shone his light upon us, whom he has redeemed by his blood. Alleluia. Let us pray. <clears throat> Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.